The Romney Board of Education meeting is called to order. The Board of Education is in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, entitled the Open Public Meetings Act. The time, date, and location of this meeting was appropriately advertised by notifying the retrospect, as well as posting notices in the Barrow Hall, Ronnie Post Office, Mary Bolt School, Align Bingham School, Grace Sailing School, and the Ronnie Public School District website. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, board members. Ms. Adair? Here. Ms. Anderson? Here. Ms. Beebe? Work. Mr. Buckon? Here. Ms. Davidson? Here. Ms. Farry? Here. Mr. Impagliazzo? Work. Ms. Panzarello? Here. Ms. Baldwin? Here. We have a quorum. Also present, Mark Iannucci, Superintendent of Schools, Sean McCarran, Business Administrator, Supervisor of Curriculum Instruction, Mrs. Jade Yezzi, Principal of Bingham Downing School, Mrs. Gladys Hubbard, Child Study Team Supervisor, and Mr. Frank Hines, Supervisor of Golding and Browns. At this time, I need a motion to approve the minutes, the regular meeting minutes of August 17th, the executive meeting minutes of August 17th, and the special meeting minutes of August 30th. No Motion made by Chaz. I'll second. Seconded by Maria. Please, do uh, you have any questions? And be sure to only vote for meetings that you were here. Roll call. Ms. Adair? For the meeting on the 30th? Oh, the 30th. I'm sorry. I apologize. So abstain from the 17th? And yes, for the board. Yes, sorry about that. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Buckon? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Um, yes, for one and two, and I was not present for uh, three. Were you at the board retreat? No. That's one and two. I'm sorry, how many? That's okay. I, I just remember you not. So for the 17th? I was not here. You will say? And yes, for the 30th. 30th. Right, my error. No problem. Um, Ms. Farry? Abstain. Ms. Panzarella? Uh, yes, for the regular meeting on the 17th and the executive on the 17th, and I abstain from the special meeting. Mm -hmm. Ms. Balding? Yes. Motion passes. At this time, I need a motion to approve the financial report, period ending August 2016. I make a motion to approve the financial report. Motion made by Maria? Second. Seconded by Naomi. Any questions? Roll call. Ms. Adair? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Buckland? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Farry? Yes. Ms. Panzarella? Yes. Ms. Baldwin? Yes. Motion passes. At this time, we have um, Mrs. Monaco and some elementary art students. Mrs. Jazzy, did you have? Oh, I don't know. This is Monica to take over. All right. <laughs> I'm very happy that we have some of our artists here tonight. But Mrs. Monica will give you an overview and introduce them to you tonight. Okay. And I'll take a bit. Okay. <laughs> We're very picky about what we're showing. That's okay. Oh. We don't have a camera. No. That's how a true camera is. Yes. special arts students and I'd like to introduce them to you and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, just a quick little overview on what our special art program is these are our special art students they're extremely proud to share with you their artwork this is Tara Cucciarelli or you want to introduce yourself Go ahead. I'm extremely proud to be their art teacher, and um, I'm really proud to be a part of the Runnymede School District, and thankful that the school board and the administration is so supportive and encouraging of the arts in our schools. Our special art program is a one class a week 
program, the students have a regular art class and then they get to come in on one extra class a week. They are made up of second and third graders. These are our current third graders because we just started this year. So they are, these are, this is their second grade work that they're showing you. We don't have anything yet to show you, we just started. But it's usually 12 to 15 students in both schools. So it's one day a week in Downing and one day a week in Bingham. It's really a student-driven program. So the students, they have, a, they have a plan. They come in, they know what they want to work on. They have folders, they come in, they get their folders. They choose the supplies they want to use. So I, I guide them and try to encourage them to try new things. If they've never used oil pastels, if they've never used watercolor paints, to try new things. We work on different techniques, drawing techniques, things that we may not be able to touch on so um, specifically in the classroom because it is a small group of 12 to 15 students. So you see they brought some of their work that they're able to, that they chose to work with, but we really do encourage them to try new mediums, new techniques. We talk about different artists that we can use as inspiration for our artwork. So, I don't want to do all the talking. So would you like to, Tara, show them what you, what you, ch they chose their piece that they'd like to bring, and Tara chose two, and tell them why, hon. Um, I wanted to choose two because I have a lot of good art projects, and I couldn't decide. <laughs> Very nice. Would you like to tell them what this one is? This is a flamingo I made in special art. Um, it was really hard to do. Um, I blended some colors in on the top, and then I did two separate colors on the bottom. And then I made little lines on the flamingo's legs, and I did little leaves in the little middle of the stomach. Sorry. And what did, you, what, did you, what did you use to make? I made, used pastels to make this. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. working on illustrations, pencil drawings, trying to develop those skills. Caitlin? I brought in my birds from special art. I um, used oil pastels. I used um, grays, blues, browns, and greens. Very nice. Right. Right. What did you title your your drawing? Family flowers. Family flowers. So each one represents my dad, my mom, and <laughs> As as well as each of the students working on their own projects. So they may be working at different times. So they're not, there's not a deadline. They're not saying we're working on this three weeks. So if one student chooses to focus on their oil pastels and continue with that, that's great. While another student wants to move on to something else. So it really is student driven. We also try to work on at least one collaborative project during the year. So actually, I brought, I'm sorry, I forgot to bring mine. <laughs> just so you can see, just a little example, you can, a take home for you. And it has on here our collaborative project, our independent artwork with some examples. And in our collaborative project, you'll see last year our students chose to work together, Ms. Tansen, chose to work together to build a life size gingerbread house. So they painted all the parts, they cut out the parts, they used paper, and we assembled it in the wall, on the walls, in both Bingham and Elementary. So you see 
each school. So it was interesting to see the differences that the students chose to handle and the different materials that they used. At the bottom of this class, haven't decided yet what they're going to do for their collaboration, but they've already asked if they can make the gingerbread house. So I think we're going to do that, but we'll probably do something new as well. And as, as the art students in the special art are also such a huge part in our art expo at the end of the year. So they are the guides, they greet you at the door, they hand you our programs, they explain to you where you need to go. And at the bottom of the picture, you'll see, you'll recognize some of our students here from the Art Expo. Our theme last year was Art Through the Seasons. So they actually made, the they were the weather reporters. So they had their boards, they reported on the weather, average rainfall, we, we did it in class and looked up the statistics. They did all the artwork, they decorated the boards and they stood there that night and they really were able to answer any questions that, that people asked them. So they were fabulous with that and they came dressed like weather reporters and it was really nice. So they will continue to do that and be a big part of our art expo at the end of the year. What's your second project? Oh, yes, You're having a whole My second project is um, a little thing on school that I made in regular art class. Um, this is me flying in the sky. <laughs> um, I use little like square decorated squares around it and glued them on to make it decorated around it, and I painted it blue in the background. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very creative. Nice. of the Rod Grant funding coming in shortly. Um, we started before and after care within the district across all three schools. Um, I'd like to publicly thank Scott Morakovitz for all of his help. Um, as he's the supervisor of the program, overseeing all three programs. Our numbers are extremely high. Um, you'll see on there this evening one of your approvals is ensuring the fact that all district employees are approved to work the program as needed, um, determined by administration. And that's to ensure that our numbers stay 1 to 10 to 1 to 12. So that would be stay with a, that, that ratio for the after school program as we feel like that's essential for it to be successful. So like, excuse me for interrupting, if, if you were to get like four or five new applicants, we, we, you may need to have an additional staff. Correct. That's why you want them all. So for example, we might have 45 people signed up 
for an after school program in one of the buildings. Right. And we might have only had two people assigned. Sure. We might never have 45, but once we hit, you know, 30, mm -hmm. um, what we've started doing is we have one of our staff members come in, and that person then leaves as soon as the numbers go gotcha. below a certain amount. Because at the end of the day, this, this is operated solely by the program itself. It's not operated with any district funding. Um, it's operated by the funding provided by the parents for the program. So I have to make sure that our costs are sticking to exactly what it needs to be. So similar to food service, any money that's made off the program has to be used on the program or something similar to the program. So summer programming for childcare would be something that we'd be able to use towards. If we had to purchase items for the program, we could use the money for that. So that's what it has to be focused on. Like Legos. Legos, exactly. That was, a, that was a joke because when I was here, I had a, I was here, I said, do you have all the supplies that you need? And someone said, not enough Legos. So Sean had a, I had to come over on my lunch break, we had to meet each other so I could sign him a check so he could go so buy I some Legos. So I could pick Legos up Legos for the for children to have that afternoon. But, um, so they have everything that, you know, they need and the workers have been doing an amazing job in terms of working with the students. We've been getting very positive feedback from the parents. Um, and I will say also with back to school nights, our food service manager, Ruby Jewell, was at all three schools for back to school nights. And she was getting, you know, she was kind of taken back. And Ruby's been doing a fantastic job with food program and building up our breakfast counts and making sure that applications are coming in. But parents were coming up to her and thanking her for, you know, changes in menu or, you know, and we're doing a lot of surveying of students. So we'll pull students in to try out different pizzas. And then it, they're shocked when they see that what they're saying is then on the menu for the next month. Or last year, the big push was for General Tso's chicken. Um, it's chicken nuggets with a, a, it's a sauce on it. It's but they were thrilled when they, they actually had General Tso's good. chicken on the menu. Um, so they feel like their voices are being heard. And, you know, we're, we're providing the students with what they need. So the, the office has been very busy and doing a great job of keeping up with all of that. So I may be speaking, like, too soon, but would would this be something that we're thinking about continuing in the summer or we or no because of what's been going on like with the barrow program and stuff? Well I think it might assist in terms of looking at our summer programming right now the money that we use for summer programming is our special education funding and then it's also title one funding mm -hmm. so what this might allow is it might allow other programs to come into place that we might not already have so it might be an option and working with the borough and aligning their summer program to our summer program then provides parents with a seamless transition between the two programs. So ideally we would be keeping that relationship with the borough that we currently have. I was just asking because I know surrounding districts are doing that. So yes. I just wanted to know if maybe it was something that we could do for our working with parents. Doc, are we seeing uh, a better response from the parents in the community in getting the free lunch applications in? Because that has an impact on some funding. Sure, yeah. It does have funding. an impact. Um, what I will say is, is that I put out a message a, a week ago. We've sent home additional ones. My office is calling parents who might have been free or reduced in prior years. A lot of parents don't realize that they need to fill out a new application each year. Mm -hmm. So just because a parent was <laughs> receiving free or reduced the year prior, once October 15th hits, everyone moves to paid if you haven't submitted an application. So that's really why we push everyone to get in their applications, turn it in. We also work with um, Black Horse Bike because it's per family. So if we see that any students listed on the application are high school students, we then work with that business office to ensure that the high school student is also receiving free or reduced um, that they might be entitled to. And students don't always realize that they're entitled to free or reduced breakfast if they receive free or reduced lunch. So that is something we're providing. Any other questions for Dr. McCown? Thank you. Ms. Ryan, you well, I just gave a brief district enrollment to 869 students. Um, 13 out there some similar numbers to last year, so our healthy enrollment projection was as good. Um, it's always spread out between grade levels. You never know if some grade levels have a little bit more than others. Um, but we're Consistent. We're excited about that. So we're our staff right now. Anytime staff needs to be added, um, whether it's for numbers increasing or IEP driven decisions, we'll bring those to you. Um, 
as of right now, September 20th, I think we're pretty consistent uh, right there. Oh, but I want to th thank all our building administrators as, uh, as well as uh, Mr. Hines for preparing for the opening of school years. The schools were great. Uh, last second things were done. Everybody's worked hard planning those activities. I, I know if you drove by, you saw Frank Lane Mulch out in the 98 degree weather one day, which wasn't too fun. As well as the building principal, Mr. Dr. Karen, and Ms. Hubbard, Ms. Hubbard for organizing some of the opening day activities. Some of those things are mandated that we have to do. Um, this year we decided we were doing a little twist on the second day, so we did some more, I think they were more fun related activities for the staff. Health, health and wellness, we're trying to, as we told you before, one of our goals is to project it you know, for some teachers. It's a very stressful job. So um, we brought in a, a yoga instructor. Rotated different stations, so the teachers get more exposed to they got a 30 minute yoga session, which some people would never expect to enjoy. It. Really enjoy that. Um, give them benefits for that. We brought in something for stress management, uh, to have discussions, you know, some ideas about how to really stress their life. We had a dodgeball center set up for those people to alleviate some. Aggression. That's stress management. Um, <laughs> <laughs> stressful, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. Mr. Fawny, our teacher, both let the teachers do some uh, practices. Oh, I think it was the, was the paint, color. adult coloring activities. <laughs> then just to kind of like ease themselves. The feedback from the staff, uh, they really appreciated it. Um, they'd like to see more stuff, stuff like that maybe in the future. We'll, we'll try to make this thing. Like, so it was a little different than our beginning of the second day, but it was very well received. Um, as far as district events, back to school nights, I mean, all three schools, I think, had some great attendance for back to school nights. This is Yazzie's program. This is similar to the buildings this year as it was in previous years. And Mr. Peel and Mr. Silver, we have a nice job organizing that for that. As Charlie was talking about earlier, that rotating high school format where teachers were, uh, parents were exposed to not that it really format, but they were actually in the classroom following their students' schedules. Um, I want to thank the principals for that. Also, the Honor Society Great. helped out with organizing those activities. Um, the only thing I said, our MOA agreement, which we talked about uh, in August, make sure we're okay with that. It's the last thing I intended on Thursday, and that's signed off on with the county prosecutor's office. So we'll back short back short back short back short. Um, and that's all I have to at this time. Also, thank everybody for the fact that Back to school barbecue and also my success. Um, you thank maintenance and administration. I need to thank the secretarial staff. Oh, well. always the well, I mean, because uh, I, I know hire the beginning the administration, of the school year. So. Is she looking at you? Beginning right? of the school year. <laughs> Mrs. Marker, you don't have to worry. I don't forget you, ladies. So <laughs> thank you. I wasn't finished yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you well, Did you hear that long pause? I just want to give me flowers. But now <laughs> Morning, I appreciate you and everything else in our staff. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and I didn't mean to throw you under the bus, but I mean, you can't leave them out. Sorry. So, um, thank you, Mr. INUT. Uh, principal's reports, nurses' reports, building and ground special education report. If you have any questions, please let Mr. INUT know sooner rather than later so he can address your concerns. Uh, PTA report, I don't, we don't really have. Um, much. Uh, there's a few new events that we're going to have. You'll see on the use of facilities, so maybe you can make it. We're having a designer bag bingo um, in the fall. That is on the 15th, I believe. No, the 18th of November. So in case anyone wants to come out. Also, if you would like to join the PTA, I'm the new membership chair, so I'll be sending all of you an envelope. I know that we've talked about that in the past for those who don't have students here. I will be giving you an envelope. Um, any other any other committees have anything to report at this time? Well, the Nutrition School Board will be meeting in November for the delegates. So I'll be going to that. And okay. uh, I spoke to one of the members on the Planning Board Committee. They have nothing on their agenda this, okay. this month. However, okay. I was informed by uh, the committee person that the gentleman that was trying to get approved to construct houses back uh, by the ACME and the apartment complex, that's possibly going to be resurrected and he's going to possibly, maybe he's got better finances right now. Yeah, go around that. But just that, saying, just didn't work out. Yeah, that may be coming up again at one of the planning zoning board meetings as far as discussion. I'll keep you posted on that. Okay. Um, 
Yes, I have some dates before we leave of maybe some things that we can make sure that it's not, it's not you know, that we can make uh, several people can. Sure. Um, September 20, September 30th is the, um, the general um, meeting where we have the directors for the New Jersey School Board Association and currently I'm the alternate um, for Camden County and um, I have to check into it but I might have a conflict um, so I'm, I'm going to possibly not be able to go. I'm just going to call and ask them if I can possibly send somebody else from the sure. board. But they may, you know, have another person. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I just have to uh, get approved for that, and then I'll let you know. Reach out to us. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter has a game in Buffalo, and I'm just trying to figure out what to what's the right thing to do. Good, good daughter. Uh, so, that's yeah. what. That's yeah. the right thing. That's the right thing. Right 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 yeah. So plan B. You know, I'm just trying to figure that out. I am or so I. Thank you for letting us know. Um, yes, go ahead. For New Jersey School Board's convention at the end of, um, October. October. end of October, the board will be receiving all information regarding convention at the next Board of Education meeting. So you'll be receiving your packet with all itinerary listed. So, however, if you know that you, because I believe we, you block the room for everyone, so if you know for a fact you are not going, please let Dr. McCarran know. So My office will be calling. Okay. All right. I, I want to mention something too. Uh, those of us who were, that were reelected this past year are required to sit in on the governance for training. Okay. Uh, you can do it all, all online. Yeah. I've been all, I've gone online every week for the past four weeks, and it's, it's not, not online. Available. They won't register you until after okay. school boards. Yes. Oh, okay. Now you can only take good online question. if yeah. you don't go to the convention. Then I'll, okay. Then I'll be doing it in Atlantic City. And if you're however, though, convention 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 and then four times however if I don't want to do it there, you don't have to. Like if I want to go to work that day, I can do it online. Yes, you can. Yes. Like there's not, I don't have to nope. hit it that day by nope. that date, right? Yeah. I didn't want to be late. That's what I thought. Remember, I, didn't I didn't want to. I'm so excited to have that for like the fifth time. It's just yes. overwhelming. I don't have to so, all right, thank you, Dr. Karen. Uh, Black Horse Pike, I don't believe there's anything about negotiations. <laughs> we have anything so all right then we'll move on to new business um, under property and transportation I need a motion to approve item number one all the use of facilities I need a motion to approve number one all the use of facilities I'll second motion made by Maria seconded by Patty any questions roll call Ms. Adair yes Ms. Anderson yes Mr. Buffon yes Ms. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Barry? Yes. Ms. Pendarella? Yes. Ms. Spaulding? Yes. Motion passes. Under personnel, we need a uh, motion to approve numbers one through three. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made by Chaz, seconded by Naomi. I think that Dr. McCarran already explained number one. So, is there any other questions there? <laughs> Roll call. Ms. Adair? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Buffon? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Barry? Yes. Ms. Panzarello? Yes. Ms. Falden? Yes. Motion passes. Under finance, we added one more, which was on the addendum, so we need a motion to approve items number 1 through 12. Uh, can I ask you a question? Can you make the motion first? What okay, yes. Uh, I'll make the motion. Motion by Jazz, seconded by Maria, because I have a question as well. Okay. Go ahead, Jazz. Uh, I am not available on the 29th for the county uh, school board meeting. But I am available if I could have an amen for the December 5th meeting. Is that possible? If not, next week, next month's meeting, the have meeting for the Camden County School Board's meeting on December the 5th. So we're adding Chaz to December, December 5th. 5th. Thank you. And you cannot attend which meeting, Chaz? Sorry. I cannot. His name's not on there. His oh, name's not on there. Um, I have a question. For the dyslexia workshop, is that total or per person? Total. Total. Four people go for that. Any other questions? Roll call. Ms. Adair? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Buckhan? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Barry? Yes. Ms. Pizzarella? Yes. Ms. Spalding? Yes. Curriculum, I need a motion to approve items number one through six. I need a motion to approve items one through six on your curriculum. Second. 
Motion made by Maria, seconded by Naomi. Any questions? <coughs> Roll Ms. Adair? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Buckon? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Farry? Yes. Ms. Panzarella? Yes. Ms. Spaulding? Yes. Motion passes. Policy and public relations, I need a motion to approve items number one to three. That's where number two and number three came yes. on the addendum. I'll make that motion. I'll motion, second. Motion made by Chaz, seconded by Maria. And that committee was not to <laughs> any, any questions? <laughs> I came to it. Roll call. <laughs> Ms. Adair? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Buckon? Yes. Ms. Davidson? Yes. Ms. Ferry? Yes. Ms. Panzarella? Yes. Ms. Spaulding? Yes. Motion passes. At this time, we are open for public comment. It does not have to be on an agenda item if anyone has any questions at this time. I do for the I, I didn't think of this earlier, but um, how is drop off and pick off going right now? It, um, it was talked about at the borough meeting as well. So I the first couple days, I thought honestly went rather well. Um, police presence was helpful the first couple of days. It'd be great if they could give us more presence as well. If they're, if they're <laughs> um, just to some people, if they have a uh, relative or a neighbor picking up one day and they might not know that you know on the park. So, but it's been, I'd say, rather smooth. I feel that so far just one parent concern. Uh, the building principals and direct, I told them to direct all calls to either myself or Chief Daly. If that's the case, but it's, it's going you know, rather well. The rain yesterday was tricky, but right. for drop off. Right. right. It was but the first day of rain. Again, yeah. the whole point, point of that working with the fire was for student and staff safety. I mean, it is a hot, um, it is a, like a hot button issue right now. Like if you're out in the community, I just have received like several comments and I just say that safety is our top priority and we always support our police department and to call Mr. Ryan Uchi if they have any questions. Sometimes safety <laughs> is confused with like convenience. Yes, like it's, it's, I know it's very convenient. Yeah. However, um, you know. I think you remember my my dad would sit out on his at 5:30 in the morning when the buses used to come down here, and he would call me every morning and say, "Someone's going to get hit." So I knew at 7 a.m. when that phone when my phone was ringing, he was going to call. So we're just just like we made it in one way. We're going to do everything we can to support our police department. So and make the the drop off and pick off safer for our children. So that's what I would recommend you we all say if anyone asks. Um, Speaking of a barrel, was on Tuesday, September 27th. The caucus meeting is at 6 p.m. and the council meeting is October 4th at 7 p.m. I know that we always have one representative, but if anyone else is available, that would be awesome if we could uh, have some board members there to support. Uh, again, the Planning and Zoning Board said that there is nothing to date, but October 12th is a long time away, so I mean, uh, that's the Planning and Zoning meeting at 7 p.m. Our next board meeting is October 18th, Tuesday, and then again, the caucus meeting will be on Tuesday, the 25th, and the convention starts that day, the 25th, and runs through the 27th, if you don't have that marked on your calendar. Does anybody have anything else to add? October and June. Okay. I can't make it in October because I can't in this fall. <laughs> Just keep that in mind, 6 o'clock for the, that committee group when we'll be here. Have your own personnel. My only problem, nego negotiations. My only problem with the new date is that I may not make any of those. 6 o'clock? 6 o'clock. Okay. Because the third, when, uh, third Tuesday just happens. Well, we can also we we can also just make sure we keep you in a loop, like 
the breast of anything that comes up. We're I not meeting talk for you. We're not meeting. We're not meeting necessarily because there's something to do. Okay. If there was something that we needed to discuss that was important, we'll reach out to you and let you know That's that before. Yeah. That's fine. Any other questions? All right. I need a motion to adjourn. I need a motion to adjourn. Made to push me by Patty. Second. Second by Maria. All in favor? I was I was